You've designed a board game. Fantastic. You've thoroughly tested it with friends, family, and most importantly, strangers. Really put it through the ringer. And you're convinced you have a great game. But what do you do next? You just want a publisher to take your idea and turn it into a product. Well, this video is for you. I'm going to show you how you can make a really effective sizzle reel for your new prototype without breaking the bank. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to imagine that I've created a complex strategy game called Zoo Builder. It takes two to three hours to play, it has a ton of components, and I really think it could be the next big thing. I'm Adam Porter, I'm a game inventor from Cardiff in Wales, and I learned early in my career that a well-made video was extremely effective at securing interest from publishers. From the very beginning, in every pitch email I've ever sent, I've always included a link to a two-minute video overview for each prototype that I have to offer. Back in 2014, when I started pitching, this was often noted by publishers. They would compliment me on my approach and indicate that the succinct video was the reason that they agreed to meet with me. Over recent years, and especially during the pandemic, video pitches or sizzle reels have become a requirement for many publishers. Kickstarter users have honed the art of sizzle reels with gorgeous artwork, fully realised and animated. Professional voiceover artists hint at the rich theme and mechanisms in the game. Gone are the days of a nervy amateur game maker staring blankly at the camera and stuttering their way through a clumsy explanation of their big idea. More traditional board game publishers have followed suit, creating glossy video game-like trailers for their games, in the hope of going viral on social media. Exceptional results can be achieved when you have a few thousand pounds to throw around. But the good news for us penny-pinching inventors is that this level of production isn't necessary when pitching to board game publishers. In fact, I'd go further and say it isn't even desirable. Let's start at the beginning. My initial pitch email to a publisher usually contains a few short sentences describing the absolute basics of my game. The name, the duration, the player count, the age range and the genre, with a mention of one or two standout mechanisms. I'll generally include a single image of the game being played, though increasingly publishers seem to be using online forms for submissions, which makes everything much more inflexible. Wherever possible, I include a link to a pitch video, and I tend to label the video two minute overview to make it clear that I'm not going to be wasting anyone's time with a lengthy drawn out pitch. The risk to the publisher is low. If they click on my link and hate what they see, at least it'll all be over before they know it. But if they like what they see, it's not going to be too difficult for them to persuade their colleagues to take a look at my pitch. I can't stress this point enough. Two to three minutes is all you've got, and I try my best to keep it to two. For a very simple concept, it might even be shorter. Please don't be tempted to stretch beyond three minutes, even for the most complex strategy game, unless you already have some interest from that publisher. Every second over this incredibly tight constraint risks losing your audience. Even worse, they might not even click on your link at all. So here's the good news. You don't need to spend any money. If you've got a smartphone and a computer, then you're good to go though investing in a few cheap accessories might make the process a bit smoother. You could shoot your video holding your phone steadily in your hand, but it's going to be wobbly and distracting, so the first thing I would purchase is a miniature tripod for your phone. And these can be had for less than £5 on eBay. I've had several of them over the years, and you definitely get what you pay for, but even the cheapest examples are functional and they're going to last you for a few months before they break. Your phone has a built-in microphone. It's a bit tinny and echoey, but it's perfectly adequate for pitching to a publisher. If you want to buy an external mic for your phone, there are loads of options for every budget. I use a Rode wireless mic and I like it, but it was expensive and I never would have bought it if I wasn't making regular YouTube videos. Finally, you need editing software. Fortunately, you're not going to be making anything too fancy, so free software is perfectly adequate. For years, I edited YouTube videos using the free iMovie app. Currently, I use the very expensive program Final Cut Pro. I don't think this is necessary for the occasional pitch video. Let's get back to the prototype. How finished does it need to be before you make your pitch? Well, in terms of gameplay, your product needs to be rigorously tested and consistently enjoyable with a brilliant and obvious hook. But that's not what you really want to know, is it? What about the presentation? Well, honestly, it's less important than you think. 
make the game functional with clear graphic design, use some clip art or public domain images easily found on the internet, and print out components on paper or card. That's enough. Please don't pay for artwork at this stage. You're wasting your money. If your pitch is successful, the publishers will commission their own art, and your upfront investment may well put them off. The more designers have spent on their prototypes, the more inflexible they're likely to be when the production team wants to make changes. So you've got a prototype, you've got a phone, a computer, and some editing software. And what comes next? Well, the script. This is the most pivotal part of the process. Two minutes at my pace of speaking equates to 380 words. Your pace might be different. I speak fast when I'm presenting videos. Videos are far more engaging when they're delivered with energy. If you watch some of the earlier videos on my channel before I learnt this lesson, you will see the difference, believe me. 380 words is not a lot, especially not when I've got a prototype of the complexity of Zoo Builder to promote. I should note, in case it's not obvious, I'm using a published game here as an example. I didn't create this. Matthias Viga's hit game, Ark Nova, is a fully realised product. Your prototype is not expected to look anything like as polished as this. Hi, I'm Adam Porter, I'm a game inventor from Wales, and in this video I'm going to give you a brief overview of my new prototype game, Zoo Builder. That's 28 words. I'd love to highlight that I have a number of published games to my name, but I can't waste much more than that on an intro. So maybe I'll do it with a subtitle or something like that. If you'd like to know more about Zoo Builder, please get in touch, and I'd be very happy to discuss it further. That's my outro. Another 22 words. We're 50 words down, and we haven't even started talking about the game. It's challenging, isn't it? So we have 330 words to play with. Firstly, I want to make sure that my video highlights the key features of the game. Game genre, duration, player count, and complexity, or age range. Sometimes I also highlight the components at this point, but in a game like Zoo Builder, that would take too much time. They'll get the idea from the footage, and we can discuss specifics later if they're interested. Zoo Builder is a complex hand management engine building game for one to four players. It takes around two to three hours to play, and it's going to appeal to players of games like Terraforming Mars, Race for the Galaxy, or Everdell. Now, I don't love comparing my games to other games in pitches. It feels like the game ought to be able to stand alone. But for a game with this level of complexity, I think it makes some sense to use other known titles as a shorthand. The goal of the game is to build the best zoo, and the player who achieves the best balance between appeal and conservation will win the game. It's essential to have a short, succinct description of the winning conditions to give context to what follows. On a player's turn, they take one of five actions. Scratch that, let's use the active voice. It's much more engaging. On your turn, you take one of five different actions. Take cards, build enclosures, place animals in enclosures, form associations, or play a sponsor card to gain abilities and discounts. Okay, so it's a simplification. I've missed out loads of details about buildings and restrictions, but it gives the basic idea. Each of the five actions is more powerful if it's in a higher slot in your play area. After using the action, it shifts down to slot number one, and the other actions shift up. That's the most important central mechanism in Zoo Builder, so we've defined it early and clearly. We've seen this mechanism in other games like Civilization and New Dawn, so we're not going to use that overused and hyperbolic word, unique. But this is still our defining feature. We're approaching halfway through our word count, but between the video footage that we're going to shoot and the voiceover that we're going to record, we've covered most of the basics. So our remaining 200 words are going to cover a few interesting examples of gameplay and features of the game. Try to have an image in your mind when you're writing each sentence of the script. All of this is going to be voiceover played over the footage, which you're yet to shoot. Once we've written our entire script and planned our shots, it's relatively simple to set up our camera on a little tripod and film a bit of footage illustrating each statement. Try to be a little bit creative with your shots. Get in close on components. Shoot from different angles. Each shot only needs to be a few seconds. Think about lighting. Generally, I try to shoot video in the daytime, close to a window with natural light. But you can light up the playing space with lamps if necessary. It doesn't seem necessary to spend money on lighting equipment if you're only going to be making the occasional pitch video. Finally, we can record our voiceover. This simply means turning the camera on and reading from the script. You don't need to hide the script, because you're going to cover the whole thing with footage of gameplay. 
The only bits you'll need to deliver straight to camera are the intro and the outro, and they're so short they're easy to memorise. Once you've shot your gameplay footage, your voiceover, and your intro and outro, you can transfer all of these recordings onto your computer. I use AirDrop to do this on my Mac, but I've used wired connections in the past. It takes a bit of practice to get confident with editing video, but it's a simple process and the programs are generally pretty intuitive. Clip each of your video clips in the editing software so you only have what you need. Lay the game footage over the voiceover, and if you're feeling fancy, you could add a few simple transitions between shots, fading in and out, etc. I like to add a little bit of music at certain points, but take great care with this. It can be really distracting, so keep the volume low. I download copyright-free music from the YouTube Creator Studio, so I don't have to worry about intellectual property issues. In order to access this, you need a YouTube account, click on the top right of the page and select Creator Studio, then select Audio Library. Once you've pieced together your video, double check the length is as you desired, and then let the editing software produce the final version. Your finished video will have a massive file size, so it's impossible to share by email. I have a private YouTube channel where I upload my pitch videos. The privacy settings for each video are set so that you can only access the video if you have the link, so there's no risk of the general public finding my videos. This is the link that I share with the publisher. So let's take a look at my finished Zoo Builder sizzle reel. Hi, I'm Adam Porter, I'm a game inventor from Wales, and in this video I'm going to give you a brief overview of my new prototype game, Zoo Builder. Zoo Builder is a complex hand management engine building game for one to four players. It takes around two to three hours to play, and it will appeal to players of games like Terraforming Mars, Race for the Galaxy, or Everdell. The goal of the game is to build the best zoo. The player who achieves the best balance between appeal and conservation will win the game. On your turn, you take one of five different actions. Take cards, build enclosures, place animals in enclosures, form associations, or play a sponsor card to gain abilities and discounts. Each of the five actions is more powerful if it's in a higher slot in your play area, and after using the action, it shifts down to slot one, and the other actions shift up. When you take the cards action, you draw cards from the central display or from the deck, which features over 200 unique cards. In order to play an animal card, you must first build an enclosure on your own personal player mat. Each animal costs a certain amount of money, takes up a defined amount of space, and brings certain icons into your zoo. Animals also give you appeal and special actions, but often an animal also has certain requirements. Some experience with bears or herbivores, or perhaps a relationship with a partner university in the animal's country of origin. You gain these relationships by taking the association action. This action allows you to complete conservation projects too. Each of these offers conservation points for completing a small objective, which always involves a degree of set collection. These projects are first come, first served, so players need to race to be the first to complete any given goal. The conservation score track runs clockwise, and the appeal track runs anti-clockwise. So when one player's token crosses past the other, the game ends, and the player who crossed the scoring markers by the biggest margin wins the game. If you'd like to know more about Zoo Builder, please get in touch and I'd be very happy to discuss it further. I'm happy enough with this. I'm not pretending it's the greatest sizzle reel ever. Any videographers out there are likely to be sniggering at my ignorance and naivety, but it doesn't bother me. It's a couple of hours of work, and it's perfectly adequate for me to send to a publisher. I made the point earlier in this video that you shouldn't pay for artwork or make your prototype look too polished, because publishers might see this as an indication that you're too invested and likely to be inflexible. I think the same is true of a professionally produced sizzle reel. If it's too slick, it starts to beg the question, why aren't you producing this game yourself? I wish you the best of luck with your own sizzle reels. Let me know in the comments if you've ever made a video pitch in the past and how you got on. And don't forget to check out the many other videos on this channel about board game design, and of course, subscribe so I can keep you up to date with what I'm doing next. And while we're here, if you haven't already, you really ought to check out Matthias Vigger's Arc Nova. It's ace. Until next time, all the best.